what's going on everybody okay so i didn't get an opportunity to film because this last wednesday was my birthday but i just wanted to come at you with a quick episode i don't think i'm going to post this on the actual podcast clips page because i want to keep this like under five minutes just because the um prelims are going to start here soon but i just wanted to get something <laughs> off my chest regarding the piotr jan versus marab Feely fight and I'm going to title this episode basically like what happens if Marab wins because if Marab wins there's some wild stuff that's about to happen in the bantamweight division and I tried to map it out as best as I could on my <laughs> little whiteboard but the first thing that I really just wanted to get off my chest is the fact that I, like we just need to stop with the slander regarding Marab Dwalishvili like just because the dude decides to grapple and nullify really good strikers does not make him a boring fighter at all. Like, literally, all we have to go back is to the Marlon Marais fight. That was probably one of the... I made a video after that fight saying Marab Dwalashvili is one of the most exciting guys in the bantamweight division. And I think he's going to come and put it on Piotr Jan in this fight. Now, does that, <laughs> does that mean that I think he's going to beat Piotr Jan? I don't know. I'm definitely favoring, favoring Piotr in this fight. But I think that just that whole notion and people put like even like Sugar Sean O'Malley and his coach um, Tim Welsh pushing this narrative that Marab is a boring fighter. It's like, no, dude, if you have the gas tank to shoot constantly like a Saeed Yugub Kakramanov to nullify some of these really good, long, lengthy, lengthy strikers, especially in a division where there is such a gap in fire. You can get a guy that's 6'1 with a freaking long ring, wingspan and then you get a guy like Marab who's a short, stocky wrestler. You just got to do what you got to do at times. And Marab, he's super exciting, in my opinion. And the way he just pushes the pace and never gets tired, throws absolute bombs, throws caution to the wind, throws his overhand rights, connects sometimes. That could maybe get under Piotr on skin because Marab is a fast starter. And I know Piotr in a five-round fight likes to kind of hang back. You can't do that against Marab because you could be down two rounds, especially if you get taken down because Marab can pin people on the ground. And as we've seen in the Aljamain Sterling fight, not saying Marab's the same grappler as Aljamain Sterling, all I'm saying is that Piotr Jan, he can get held down for a round or two without getting back up to his feet, especially against a strong guy like Marab. So I think it's going to be interesting, but I do think at the end of the day, Piotr is going to win. But this is what we got to get into. And that's the fact that the bantamweight division is going to be an absolute shambles, I feel like, if Marab wins, just given the fact that his best friend is Aljamain Sterling. So I kind of wrote this on my whiteboard here, all right? And I think you guys probably already got this figured out, but I just really wanted to talk about it. So basically, Marab wins, all right? Both Al Jermaine and the winner of Cejudo, both of them are basically forced to move up. We know that Henry Cejudo is going to move up inevitably because he wants to get that fight with Volk. So we know that. But if Aljo beats um, Marab, I mean, if Aljo beats Cejudo, Aljo has no f choice but to move up because they're not going to fight each other, and that was just stall the division, okay? And I guess that, like, if Aljo moves up in this scenario, I guess both Sudo and Aljo move up, Marab would end up having to fight Sugar Sean O'Malley. And this is the conclusion that I came to that was absolutely mind-blowing, is I didn't think he was going to come this soon, but we might have a Sucro Sean O'Malley as the bantamweight champion of the world, because I honestly think that he could... his. His grappling defense is a little bit underrated, and if he can keep Marab off him and crack him with a few shots, as we saw in like Marla Marais fight, I don't know, man. I think Marab could get dropped in Sugar Sean. I'm not a hater on Sugar Sean. Me not my, me, he might not be like my favorite guy to watch, but I definitely think that the ship on easily beating Sugar Sean O'Malley is sailed away. Okay, this guy is a legit bet, one of the best strikers in the entire division. And you got to go Marab or Sugar Sean for that interim title, depending on if Cejudo wins, because uh, if Aljo wins, he's going to stay. Cejudo's probably just a one and done -er, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And then uh, going back on the opposite side of the spectrum is if Jan versus Aljo, if Jan beats Marab here, we get an Aljo three most likely, or we get Jan versus Sugar, which is pretty sick because i feel like all of these people just have things in common so we get really awesome fights and then where does that leave san hagen versus cheeto vera so if we get a aljo three happening and yawn wins then that sets us up for maybe a sugar yawn rematch for the 
undisputed <laughs> bantamweight championship, or we could get a if Cheeto beats Corey Sanhagen, we get a Sugar vs. Cheeto show, get that rematch that we all have been waiting for. So it, I don't know. I just want to keep this video short. If Marab wins, he shakes up a lot of things, just given the fact that he's best friends with the champion. But I just that's all I really wanted to talk about is. Number one, we cannot be sleeping on Marab Dualashvili, okay? One of the most exciting bantamweights in the world. I don't care what anybody says. Grappling, it's MMA, baby. It's not always. It's not just kickboxing, so you got to do what you got to do. And there's just so many fun potential matchups we could see. We could see... I just, I just really love the inner connectivity of all the guys. It seems like everybody has history, even though they might have not fought each other. Even Cejudo and Sh Sugar Sean O'Malley. Like, I bet if Sugar Sean O'Malley gets his hands on the belt and somehow Cejudo lose to loses to Alexander Volkanovsky, I bet you Cejudo would fight Sugar Sean and that would be massive. So, yes, sir. That's all I wanted to talk about. Marab, go out there and shake up the world. But I don't know. Piotr Jan, I think people kind of forgot how good Piotr is after that Sugar Sean O'Malley fight. But... Peter won that fight, so it is what it is. But thank you guys. Um, and we'll be back with more of a full length episode this upcoming week, especially. I'm going to be making some cool posts for our boy Leon Rocky Edwards. All right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll get this out. Let's go.